My name is Ralph Melcher B. Lacan, an applicant for junior high school English teacher for the position of teacher one. Good afternoon everyone. Before we start, can you check your face masks, wear them properly, and observe social distancing? Alright, so now let's all stand for prayer. And Father, is Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, please take your seats. For today's attendance, when I call your name, can you tell me your favorite color? Tabulo? Alright, so everyone's present. So, as a short recap, last week we were talking about literature. Literature is seeing the world through the eyes of words. So again, expressing yourselves through words. So, as a short recap, is literature important in our daily lives? Mary Ann, can you answer the first question? Alright, so literature is important for you. What makes it important, Mary Ann? Okay, so it improves your communication. Good. Kevin. Do you agree with Mary Ann's answer? Alright, so um, follow-up question, Kevin. As a student, how does it affect you? Okay, so it gives you more confidence when you talk to your classmates when you talk in front. Good job, Kevin. Good job, Mary Ann. I think everyone also agrees. Alright, so to further strengthen this idea, and here in Kwong, I will be reading this twice. The first time, I will read it by myself. The second time, we will read it all together. All right? Trees. I think that I shall never see a palm as lovely as a tree. All right, so now it's your turn. All together, go. All right, so thank you so much. So next time, try to read a bit slower and emphasize more on the pronunciations. All right? So all throughout the palm, was there a word or words that struck you the most? Janmark? Okay, so trees. The title trees, it talks about, or it was talked about, all about the palm. Thank you, Janmark. Um, when you talk about trees, what does it symbolize? Yes, very good. It symbolizes life. Only God can create a tree. From a small seed to a very big tree. Thank you. So now to further this discussion, and before we go to the discussion proper, we'll divide the class into two groups. So, this side up until the right will be group one, and here up until the left will be group two. So, you will have 10 minutes to read and discuss among yourselves, give your opinions on the poems that I will be giving to each group. Each group needs to have one leader, one secretary, and two reporters. So, their secretary will write the answers to the members, the reporters, will share what they have discussed in the group and the leader will facilitate inside the groups. Alright, so we have 10 minutes for this. So, group 1, this will be your um, output. And group 2, this will be your output. Alright, so 10 minutes are up. So now let's go back to your seats. Alright, so let's hear from the reporter from group 1. Okay, thank you so much. Now the reporters from group 2. Okay, so thank you so much again. So all your answers are correct. So the first and the second reporters, you had good answers. So now, if you haven't figured out, our topic for today is all about poetry. Seeing the word, seeing the world through the eyes of words. So for today, these are our objectives. And poetry or poems mainly is a writing and arranged in a specific order that invokes emotions. So two key words here. Words in a specific order, in a specific manner. Second is emotion. So when you write the words, there's emotions to create. That is poetry. So as a poetry or a poet, we have well, we have here word vaults. You need to understand the words first. When talking about poetry, we have word lines. A line is considered as a sentence when you write a paragraph or essay. One sentence equals one, uh, one line in poetry. Number two, a stanza, a group of two, four, even more um, lines. So if you're writing a paragraph, a stanza is a, an example of a paragraph. So four or five sentences all together. So again, lines are sentences, stanzas are paragraphs when writing essays. And lastly, a couplet is the last two lines in every poetry that always has to rhyme. It can be serious or it can be um, funny. 
but the last two lines needs to rhyme in order for it to be counted as a couplet. So here we have two main types of poetry, narrative poetry and lyrical poetry. Narrative poetry tells a story. A story can either be in a verse uh, told by a speaker or a narrator. So it can be shared verbally or written, but mainly in narrative, it focuses on verbal communication where it has two parts or two types, a ballad and an epic. Whereas lyrical poetry, it focuses on expression of emotions. There are poems, our poems here are rather shorter compared to ballads and epics. So it has lesser stanzas and lesser lines. Examples of the types of lyrical poetry, number one, we have a sonnet, number two, a haiku, and number three, free verse. So we'll dig deeper on these types as we go on. So any questions so far? None? Okay, so let's proceed to the narrative poetry. Narrative poetry, the first one is a ballad. So talking about stories in a writing form or in a song. So it talks about characters with short stanzas and simple words and you, uh, usually tells a heroic tale. So just like an example would be the story of Hercules. So this example of a ballad. You're telling the story. It may, may be true or it may be fictional, but still, the form of the story. That's an example of a ballad. Next, we have an epic. So an epic is a very long narrative story and talks about heroes and their deeds. So just like here, we have the Avengers. So the movie Avengers is an example of an epic. They're heroic tales that is written in comics or even in movies. So this is an example of an epic. Um, further examples of the poems will be found on the handouts. So please paste them on your notebooks. So those are the two types of narrative poetry. Now we're going to lyrical poetry. So the first type is a sonnet. A sonnet has 14 lines. So one, four. 14 lines and the last two lines are considered as a couplet. So the last two lines need to rhyme. So it's written in a iambic pentameter, and the theme of the poem is um, sung in the two lines in, within the couplet and it can either be topics about love or about philosophy. So second one is haiku. A haiku is a Japanese form of poetry. It has three lines. The first line is has five syllables and the second line has seven syllables and the third line has five syllables. So it's sandwiched, or the seven syllables is sandwiched between two five lines or two five um, uh, syllables. So it's usually um, written in the present tense. So the tense always used here is in the present form. And of course, the last type here is free verse. Free verse, there's no specific rules, there's no format to be followed. There's no specific topic to be followed. It's all about what you feel here as an author. So every write, you can express that one as a free verse. All right, so any questions so far? Done? Okay, so, all right, so for the next part will be your assessment. Please focus on the palm trees on your handouts and in your English notebook. I want you to copy the questions and I want you to answer them on your notebook. Once you've finished writing, please put your notebooks at the back, at the basket on the table. All right. So you have five minutes starting now. Is anyone still writing? All right. So thank you so much. Everyone's finished. So before I dismiss you. I have one assignment here. So on a short bond paper, I want you to write your very own poem. Please focus on lyrical poetry. It can either be a haiku, it can either be a free verse, or it can either be a sonnet. Please use this as a guideline for your criteria. 10 points concept, 10 points content creativity, and 10, uh, 5 points for grammar. Total of 25 points. You have until Friday to pass your output. Alright, so any other questions? None? Okay, let's all stand for a prayer. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, bye everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye.